Hey, I'm Luke Mum No Computer, and today I'm building a sequencer, and hopefully after this, you can too. So what is this sequencer thing? It's basically something that fires out a sequence, and in the case of a synth, it fires out a sequence of voltages. Up here we've got a simple 8-step sequencer. You can see there's lights, and below the lights there's knobs. When that light is on, this knob is going to control things. Let's go to this one. And then it's this knob. These ones don't do anything until that light is above it. But then if you send a clock through it, it's going to make a sequence. This is one of the simplest sequences you can make. It's called a Baby 8 sequencer and it's made with a 4017 counter chip. Oh, I'll turn it off. And what this 4017 does is you send a signal in like this and it turns one pin off and another pin on, and it turns the other pin on, and another pin on. These pins or legs of the chip are connected straight to potentiometers, which means you can turn the voltage that it sends out up and down. And then you can make it vary into a sequence. The only downside about this Baby 8 step sequencer is you can't adjust it to go backwards and forwards and stuff, because that's not how this chip works. So what if you swap this chip with an Arduino, and then you can make it do whatever the heck you want? So I'm going to go over to the workbench, put one together, and show you how it's done. Right, I started a little bit too early in the build process, because, ah, there's the big bang. Okay, fast forward a few billion years, and then we get to this point. So we've got a 20 by 40 centimetre panel here. I kind of measured it all out, and then I started drilling pilot holes. Always drill pilot holes, because when you do big things like this, it's really hard to get them in the right place, so if you've got small holes there first, you're going to definitely get it in the right place. Those ones are for the potentiometers and the jacks. I think it's like 10 millimeters. Absolutely fucking lovely. Oh, just look at that. Just look at that shine. Yeah, and then I spray it, but I usually spray it outside, but the video wasn't picking up. That is cancer right there, that's cancer. So just do it outside. And then put it on the oven, put it on the oven and make sure it dries. And then draw on a silver sharpie if you want. I missed it with some clear lacquer. And then put it back on the oven thing. And then I put it back and I just, ooh, lovely. And then I get the potentiometers and the buttons and all that, and I could kind of put them all in. I tighten them on with a pair of pliers, but sometimes I miss and I scratch the panel and it's really sad. Hot glue going in on LEDs, cheapest way, I promise you. Oh yeah, look at that. Uh, and then I put the knobs on. So the first bit of soldering is putting down the ground bus, and this is just a long bare wire, and you connect the third pins of every single pot and the negatives of every LED just because you've got to connect all of the grounds together. Get some diodes and, you know, cut the legs that are furthest away from the black stripe. And then solder them onto the middle leg of the potentiometer. Then I get a load of 1K resistors and put them on the positive leg of the LED. This stops them from burning out. And also putting them on the jack outs. Lovely, lovely. Then there needs to be a wire that goes between all of the diodes and the output jack with the resistor on it. So I get a bare wire and I solder them. But don't solder them together, just solder each line. Look at that, lovely. There's a line of bare wire that goes to every single center pin of the pot that is past the diodes. Now it's time to connect all the rows together get some more diodes. This time I've got it close to the black line. That's because the electricity is going to flow out of the jacks and the black line is the one where it's going to. So yeah, solder them down onto the uh, jack outs. These are the gate outs of each step. And then I put a 1K resistor on them. Now I connect up the potentiometers together because each row connects to the same pin on the Arduino. So these all connect together. Lovely jubbly. And then, yeah, look at that, that's a beauty shot right there. Neat. And then I solder all the LEDs to the same thing, so the pots, the LEDs, and the diodes are all connected. Oh, now I'm pointing at the inputs. So I put a 10K 
on the actual positive line, but then I solder it straight to the ground of the jack. That's a pull down resistor to make sure that the digital input pin on the Arduino goes to ground and then turns off instead of does random stuff. And I, this is me doing the same to the other switches because they're digital inputs as well. So this is a 10K resistor and that's gonna go straight to ground because you, you want it to go down. That's a pull down resistor. It pulls down the voltage when there's no other signal coming in. Lovely. So that goes to the ground bus as well. Now I'm snipping some more diodes. And these diodes are gonna go from that same leg that the 10K resistor is on. But this diode is used to make the, gr the gate bus, which is actually gonna go straight over and connect over to the gate out, which is the thing that you're gonna plug things in when you want it to signal when you've pushed a button, like a keyboard. And then I solder long wires onto all of the rows. I found it easiest to solder it onto the resistor because that's bare metal. Easy peasy, put that aside. And I do the same with all of these. I solder on some long wires. These are gonna be used to connect to the Arduino. Lovely jubbly. And now it's time to connect all the five volts together. So I've connected all of the other poles for switches and then the middle of these switches as well. So these are going straight to five volts. So you connect them all together. And that is so, when you push a button, it sends a signal to the Arduino. Oh, here's a strip board. We've got some IC socket, an Arduino Nano, a 7-8 LO5 voltage regulator, and your chosen power situation. First, you, you know, cut the bit so each side of the Arduino doesn't touch each other. Then you drill a hole to make it for the socket and plug that stuff in. Voltage regulator, solder that down right there. Yeah, lovely. And then you get a wire and plug it from that leg of the voltage regulator over to the voltage in. And then you do the same with the ground, which is the center pin of the voltage regulator. Good time to test this. Lovely. It works. It's good to drill this hole now because you don't know how many wires are going to be around. So you might make a mistake and decide to do it elsewhere. And that's a 20 millimeter standoff pin. And this is used to put the PCB on it. Now I've connected that. Damn, this is moving quick. Lovely. Spaghetti junction all nice and neat. And that is it. Ta-da! After all of that, it's done. Look at it. Loads of wires in the back. It's a bit spaghetti junction but cleaned up. So this one does a lot more than the Baby 8 sequencer because it's with an Arduino. You could code it to do whatever you want. But this one, I've made it so I could go forwards, backwards, and it's got a keyboard on it, so you could select steps when you want it. And also, when there's no clock going in, you could kind of use it as a keyboard. So let's plug it in. list and the code on the website links in the description if you haven't already please check out the patreon because it'll be amazing to get support and be able to make more things like this and more inventions like the most recent 100 oscillator drone there's going to be lots of things going on like live streams giveaways more projects and even some patreon only projects so be sure to check those out and don't forget to subscribe thanks very much Bye.